आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंस मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम अनुजा कुमार द हेडलाइंस इंडिया एंड सर्बिया एग्री टू सेट बायोलैट्रल ट्रेड टारगेट ऑफ वन बिलियन यूरोज बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस डेकेड Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman review bilateral cooperation and discuss ways to bolster relations in connectivity, energy and defense. Severe cyclonic storm Bipur Joy moves northwards of the Arabian Sea, coastal Gujarat on high alert. Union Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur sends off 198 member strong Indian contingent to the Special Olympics World Summer Games. 2023 to be held in Berlin this month and in French Open tennis Carlos Alcaraz to lock horns with Novak Djokovic in the men's singles semi-finals today and now the news in detail President Drobdi Murmu and her Serbian counterpart Alexander Vučić agreed to set a target of bilateral trade of 1 billion euros by the end of the decade in Belgrade yesterday This is a significant jump from the present 320 million euros. President Drobdi Murmu is on a 3-day state visit to Serbia from the 7th to the 9th of June. Briefing the media, the External Affairs Ministry said that during the visit, President Drobdi Murmu highlighted that the relations between both the sides have a shared understanding of each other's core interests. she addressed a gathering of indian diaspora and friends of india she underlined that both india and serbia are ancient lands and the relationship has been defined in the context of the non aligned movement in recent years both sides have shared understanding of each other's core interests serbia has been a valuable partner in india's sustainable development program as india emerges as a leading power Earlier in a joint press statement to the media President Murmu highlighted the positive outcomes of the delegation level talks and the resolve of the two nations to work on a diverse areas of potential cooperation हमारे द्विपक्षीय संबंध के सभी महत्वपूर्ण पहलुओं और समान हितों के वैश्विक और क्षेत्रीय मुद्दे पर राष्ट्रपति बुचिज के साथ मेरे रचनात्मक और सार्थक बैठक हुई है हमने अपने लंबे समय से चले आ रहे द्विपक्षीय संबंधों विशेष रूप से व्यापार और निवेश विज्ञान और प्रौद्योगिकी सूचना और डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी और लोगों से लोगों के बीच संपर्क को और बढ़ावा देने का भी संकल्प लिया President of Serbia Mr Alexander Vučić promised simplification of the visa process for Indians. He expressed hope that direct flights between the two countries will begin soon and it will promote tourism and business between the two countries. Apart from the delegation level talks, a high powered business delegation comprising members from Asocham, FICI and CII also held talks with a business delegation from Serbia. Yesterday President Murmu laid a wreath at the monument of the unknown heroes at Mount Avila. She received a ceremonial welcome and a guard of honor at Mount Avila. President Murmu will return to India today after the successful state visits to Suriname and Serbia which had started on the 4th of June. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman reviewed the bilateral cooperation and discussed ways to bolster relations in connectivity, energy and defense. Prime Minister Modi had a telephonic conversation yesterday with Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Al Abdulaziz Al Saud. The leaders reviewed a number of issues of bilateral cooperation and exchanged views on various multilateral and global issues of mutual interest. Mr Modi thanked Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for Saudi Arabia's excellent support during evacuation of the Indian nationals from Sudan via Jeddah in April this year. He also conveyed his best wishes for the upcoming Hajj pilgrimage season. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman conveyed his full support to India's initiatives as part of its ongoing G20 presidency and that he looks forward to his visit to India. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar raised the issue of Canada allowing the celebration of assassination of former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. He was briefing the media in New Delhi last evening. Dr Jay Shankar remarked that the incident was not an isolated one and points to an increasing space given to separatists in Canada. 
Canada has continuously and frankly we are at a loss to understand other than the requirements of vote bank politics why anybody would do this. Because if you look at their history, I mean you would imagine that, that they learn by the history and they wouldn't like to repeat their history. So it isn't only one incident however egregious it may be. I think there is a larger underlying issue about the space which is given to separatists, to extremists, to people who advocate violence. And I think it's not good for the relationship and I think it's not good for Canada. Responding to a media query on the fate of nearly 700 Indian students who are facing potential deportation by the Canadian government, Dr. Jay Shankar termed it as unfair on the part of the Canadian authorities. The students studied in good faith. The people who misled them, the culpable parties should be acted against. It is unfair to punish a student who undertook their education in good faith. I think the Canadians also accept that it would be unfair. If a student has done no wrong, they accept the idea that they have to find some solution for it. So we will continue to press and I would very much hope that the Canadian system is fair. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The very severe cyclonic storm Bipar Joy over the Arabian Sea is gradually moving northwards. Cyclone Bipar Joy is centered about 840 kilometers west-southwest of Goa and will intensify gradually over the next 36 hours and move north-northwestwards in the next two days. In Gujarat, the Meteorological Department has asked the fishermen to totally suspend fishing operations over the East Central and adjoining West Central and South Arabian Sea till the 12th of this month. अगले पांच दिन में मोस्टली जो इंपैक्ट है फिशरमैन के लिए और पोर्ट वार्निंग दिया गया है कि वो सेंट्रल अरबियन सी ना जाएं जितने लोग हैं डीप सी में फिशरमैन उनको कोस्ट का पास आने के लिए एडवाइस दिया गया है 10 तारीख से गुजरात कोस्ट के लिए वार्निंग है कुल मिलाकर फिशरमैन वार्निंग है लैंड एरिया के लिए नेक्स्ट पांच दिन में साइक्लोन का कोई खतरा नहीं है the Met Department has indicated the possibility of light to moderate rain in some areas of South Gujarat and Saurashtra till the 13th of June. Wind speeds are expected to be 30 to 40 km per hour in the relevant areas during this period and may increase to 50 km per hour at times. Trawling operations by mechanized boats along the Kerala coast will come to a standstill with a 52-day ban on fishing activities taking effect from midnight tonight. The ban, which is part of an annual exercise, will remain in force till the 31st of next month. More than 4,000 fishing boats operating from the state's harbors will cease fishing activities during the ban period. Traditional inboard fishing boats have been exempted from the purview of the ban. The state government has instructed fishing vessels from other states to leave the Kerala coast before midnight. In Afghanistan, at least 15 people were killed and 50 injured in a blast during a funeral service for an acting provincial governor, Nisar Ahmad Ahmadi, at Nabavi Mosque in Faisabad yesterday. Tolo News reports that Mr. Ahmadi was killed by a suicide bomber who drove a car filled with explosives into his vehicle on the 6th of June. Ahmadi's driver was also killed and six others injured in the attack. The Islamic State claimed responsibility for Ahmadi's killing. Former President of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, condemned the killing, calling it an act of terrorism and expressed sympathy for the affected families. The three-day National Conference on Recent Advances in School Education 2023 will begin at Dr. B.R. Ambedkar National Institute of Technology, Jalandhar, today. The Shiksha Mahakumbh is being organized by Sarvahitkari Shiksha Samiti, Punjab, in collaboration with NIT Jalandhar and other premier educational institutions. Union Minister of Information and Broadcasting, Anurag Singh Thakur, will be the chief guest in the inaugural session of Shiksha Mahakumbh. The event will showcase the best practices in the implementation of the national education policy and flag challenges in implementing educational reforms. The government has spent 450 crore rupees in the current Olympic cycle on training, equipment and facilities so far and has offered more assistance if required to ensure India makes a new record in the Paris Olympics 2024. 
Union Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said this yesterday while addressing a function organized in New Delhi to send off the Indian contingent of 198 athletes to the Special Olympic World Summer Games 2023 to be held in Berlin this month. In tennis at the French Open top seed Carlos Alcaraz will lock horns with third seed Novak Djokovic in the men's singles semi-finals later today. Fourth seed Kasper Rudd will face 22nd seed Alexander Zverev in the other semi-final. Yesterday in the women's semi-finals top seed Iga Swiatek defeated Beatrice Adaj Maya to set up women's singles final against Karolina Mukova. Earlier in the day Karolina had stunned second seed Arena Sabalenka to reach her first Grand Slam final. 43rd ranked Czech star beat Sabalenka 7-6-6-7-7-5, ending the Belarusian's 12-match winning run at majors. Japanese-German pair of Mio Kato and Tim Puds lifted the mixed doubles title in Paris yesterday. Indian men's hockey beat the Argentina team 3-2 to reclaim the top spot in the FIH. Pro League 2022-23 points table at Eindhoven, the Netherlands yesterday. Indian skipper Harman Preet Singh in 33rd minute, Amit Rohil Das in 39th minute, while Abhishek in 59th minute struck a goal each for India. As the Narendra Modi led India government completed 9 years last month, Akashwani News is bringing a series of special stories on the initiatives taken by the government. Today we take a look at the National Quantum Mission which aims to scale up scientific and industrial research and development for quantum technologies a report Quantum technology is a rapidly emerging field that has revolutionized the way people approach computing communication and sensing the technology not only has the potential to transform industries but also has the capacity to generate significant employment opportunities The National Quantum Mission approved in April this year at a cost of over 6000 crore rupees is aimed at scaling up scientific and industrial research and development Union Science and Technology Minister Dr Jitain Singh had highlighted that the mission is going to give India a quantum jump in this field This is a technology which makes the information processing faster more authentic more precise more secure this national quantum mission is going to give india quantum jump in the world arena there are only six countries so far who have this technology the mission is intended to take the technology development ecosystem in the country to a global competitive level the initiative will greatly benefit communication health finance and energy sectors as well as drug design and space applications it will also provide a huge boost to national priorities including digital india make in india skill india stand up india startup india and self reliant india with dipen kumar divakar akashwani news delhi and now for a look at today's newspapers it's over to subhadra ramachandran thank you anuja india hits out at canada over allowing khalistani protests at the asian age painting a favorable picture on economic growth the economic times leads with the headline reserve bank holds rates for second time in a row the indian express writes about an alarming study flagging national health concern which says the country's diabetes burden is likely to shoot up in the next 5 years the times of india also reports on the icmr study 100 million plus in india now diabetic up 45% in 4 years In a proposal aiming to expedite post mishap identification process the railways mulls aadhar seeding must for tickets right the pioneer Hindustan Times reports on the measure for allocation of post graduate seats new exit exam for medical graduates from 2024 and finally in a significant move amid border row Ladakh infra to gain heft with new strategic route to Dipsang DBO informs the tribune with that it's back to you Anuja Thank you Subhadra And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again India and Serbia agree to set bilateral trade target of 1 billion euros by the end of this decade Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman review bilateral cooperation and discuss ways to bolster relations in connectivity energy and defense Severe cyclonic storm Bipar Joy moves northwards of the Arabian Sea coastal Gujarat on high alert Union Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur sends off 198 members strong Indian contingent to the Special Olympics World Summer Games 2023 to be held in Berlin this month. And in French Open tennis Carlos Alcaraz to lock horns with Novak Djokovic in the men's singles semi-finals today. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day. <laughs>